Hello everybody, it's Jules here with Beanie. Hello. And welcome back to Live and Let's Dice, where we have a super special video for you today because we are playing a monster of a board game. Quite literally, in fact, because the lovely people over at Steamforged have sent us Monster Hunter World, the board game. So, are you ready to go hunting? Because we are. Yeah. So here we are, Monster Hunter World, the board game, where the monsters are big, but the bants are even bigger. And today we are hunting the great Jagras, this gluttonous little sod over here, who, unfortunately for me, has about 50 HP. Oh my goodness. How many do we have? We have eight, my friend, <gasps> because we are but tiny little hunters over here. And Beanie and I have selected the uh, sword and board, sword and shield wielder over here, and the great sword hunter over here. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, how do I play this game? Well, I tell you what, why don't you go over to Steam Forge Games where you can see them do a full playthrough and explain all of the rules in great detail. I will do my best to do the same here, but we are focusing on the hunt today. But as we all know, every hunt begins with tracking down this massive monster. There it is, Beanie, the ancient forest quest book, our battle tome today that will lead us to great glory. Because the thing is, is that even though we want to jump into the action and start bashing in some skulls, we have to track down the beast first, which takes the sort of premise of a choose your own adventure style gameplay section called the exploration section. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna read through all of the sections, make some decisions, which hopefully will benefit us uh, for the battle ahead, and it will help us gain potions, different items, and even change the behavior of the beast once we come to fight it. Because depending on how well we track it and gain these tokens over here, we'll be putting one of these extra attacks into a behavior deck, which determines how the monster will act in battle. So the more that we track it down, the better we understand it, the more that we'll understand how to avoid its devastating attacks. So why don't you kick things off, Beanie, by reading the first entry on this great hunt over here. So, the shoreline near the southwest camp basks in the overhead sun, bright light reflecting from the shallow pools where Keston and Apanoth water. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> Ahead, you see the entrance to the, the ancient forest formed by an arch of thick boughs, yawning open like a gaping moor. Ooh, sailor. Yes, I know. <laughs> the sounds from the world behind you fade away to silence as you step up to the rich green... Canopy? Yes, mm -hmm, that's the word. Mm -hmm. God, I can't read. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Leaving an all too bright, a brief sense of calm soon broken as the scour flies excitedly cluster around a large footprint in Ooh, the soil. Okay, <gasps> so we found our first clue. What do we do once that happens? So we must follow the scout flies. Okay. Discard one time card. Okay, so this happens here. We have 35 turns effectively to slay the beast, and once this deck runs out, it's game over, my friends. So we have discarded one immediately. And then what else do we do? So then we get to gain one of the tracker tokens. We get one of these randomly. I'm gonna choose this one over here and plunk it down over here. We'll flip them over at the end of the uh, tracking section, the exploration section, and then this will determine, like I say, which attacks go into the behavior deck. And then we will progress to entry 21. Ooh, baby. Well, it turns out that we actually found a potion as well, which means that during battle, if we start taking scrapes, which is pretty uh, likely to happen, we can use one of our potions to restore all of our health back to full and clear our stamina board. Now, the stamina board over here reflects how much tiredness we're experiencing as the battle wears on. So once it's full up, all five slots over here, our person or our hunter cannot do any actions it whatsoever. Until it's, yeah, it needs to rest, it needs to rest over there. Much like when their weapon gets dull, they'll need to discard some stuff over here to sharpen their weapon. Ooh, the lally. What page are we going to then, B? 21. Ooh, what happens on page 21? You follow a well-used trail. Scrapes and gouges in the dirt along the trees betray the monsters that frequently pass through this way. The gnawed bone of a monster picked clean of meat lays discarded to one side. Ooh. Each hunter gains one monster bone media. Oh, I love it, mate. Bone I've, media. I've got the bone for this bad boy over here. Now, this is going to be going into our resources uh, pile. So if we were playing a campaign, we'd use them to craft new weapons and armor, Ooh, which like is very that. nice indeed. So we'll put, we'll make a note of that on our character sheets and we'll progress. What do we do now? So now we get to choose between hurry Ooh. to follow the tracks along the trail, gain one track token and progress to entry 23, mm -hmm. or we get to stop and search for other bones nearby, which gets rid of one of our time cards and we get a quality bone Ooh. and one Monster bones small. Okay, well, thing is, is that we are not going to be doing the campaign right. progression. So let's move forward past that, even though this would be a perfect opportunity to get more stuff for your growing hunter uh, accessory collection. <laughs> 
Yes. So then we go on to entry 23. The trees ahead are far older and have considerably thicker foliage. It would be exhausting to hack through. Alternatively, a, track of, a trail of ore along, along the path leads to a large cave opening in the distance. You might search there in hope of finding your prey's den. Ooh. Discard one time card. Each hunter gains one carborite ore and one malachite ore. Okay. And then we get to choose, are we going in a cave or are we going through the forest? Okay, so we'll add those to our item lists right now. And I think that maybe what we should do is cut your way through the forest or backtrack to the cave entrance. Are we the type of hunting party that ever turns back or are we rising to the challenge and pushing forward? I like to think we're cowardly. Okay, let's be cowards <laughs> then. Let's go back to the cave. So yes. let's go back to the cave. So we discard two time cards for we doing do. that. So there's two more gone from the deck. And, and now we, we go, go to entry seven. Oh dear me, oh dear me. Time has passed and where are we now, Billy? So we're at number seven. So Ooh. the flickering light paint eerie shadows across the walls, dancing pools of darkness that give minds to vicious predators. Ooh, Your feet kick up dust and crunch through tiny bones, revealing sparks of metal and gems. Whoa. So we can either search, get, swag Ooh, for days okay. or turn back and run away even harder than we already have. <laughs> I, I love that, that we just keep backing away from all of the adventures. It's like, eh, no, no. You we, take an office job and uh, I've given up the hunt. Yeah, we give up hope as well. <laughs> are we going to uh, turn back or are we no, going to... I, I want the ore. Sure, okay, cool. hungry for ore. This is the thing, you always play dwarfs in a lot of video games and yeah, stuff that always. we do. So you love collecting things like this. <laughs> so, okay, do. so what do we do? Each hunter rolls on the following table. So we get a dice, my friend, and... You roll one, I'll roll another, and we will dictate what we get. So I get a, oh, a four. I and get a three. Gets a three. Yeah. What do we get? So, uh, so uh, we both get one fuk. <laughs> oh, I don't think I can say that uh, without YouTube uh, banning me. Fukium <laughs> <laughs> or <laughs> Pusium or over there. So yes. we get uh, two of those, and once each hunter is rolled, progress to entry eleven. Oh, and we also discard a time card. Run, run, run in so, middle. That, so that means we're just going to get loads of swag. Yeah. We get loads of swag, man. So we get gain one of those each. So uh, on to entry eleven, my friend. Yes, please. I like the fact that we are obviously meant to be hunting this giant beast, which is causing all sorts of chaos in the local. And we're just going like, nah, nah, let's go, let's go dig through stuff. Let's go skip diving. Okay, so in entry 11, something huge has clearly passed through this way. Fresh markings over the wall where it's squeezed its large bulk through the passageway. Whoa, okay, this it's thick. <laughs> it's thick, boy. This warren is a maze. You can either rush on blindly or stop to get your bearings. Mm. Oh, are we rushing? Oh, rushing. Rush, he's, rush, rush. He's, he's making that. He's making the rush hand gestures, which look a little bit like this. Let's go! <laughs> Let's go, my friend. So we're on to keep moving. Discard one time card. Dis uh, gain two track tokens. Lush. Very good for us indeed, because the more of these, the better. And then we progress to entry thirty. Okay. Okay. Entry thirty. What ooh, could it be? Ooh. Oh God. Oh no. A deafening roar is your only warning as you suddenly face. Find yourself face to face with your prey. Oh no. Now it's time to fight this terrifying adverse. Oh that no, okay. Yep, yeah, so that means that we have rushed straight into the mouths of the great Jagras over here, which isn't that great seeing as we only have three track tokens, but remember this is an introductory mission, so maybe the scout fly level is lower. The assigned quest scout fly level is two to five. So that means that if we hit uh, between two and five on the numerical value of these, it will determine what we add into there. Otherwise, something potentially worse will happen. Happen. Oh. But we will resolve these now, so we'll flip these over. One, one, and one, so three. So what we'll do now is we'll consult the chart and find out what that means. Ooh. So after consulting the lovely, lovely quest book over here, we have found out that we did not beat the maximum, but we did unlock the Jagra Spit attack. So we've got a ranged and poison attack to watch out for, and that is no bueno, my friend. So what this does is this gets shuffled into the cards of the behavior deck that dictate the, ja the great Jagras's movement, and it means that we'll be seeing this come up in the battle ahead. Now, just to give people a little bit of a rundown of what these cards actually mean, um, the icon here means that it attacks the uh, hunter that is the furthest away from it and what it will do is it will move to uh, or whatever uh, option is highlighted so in case this one it be move away from or move forward one move two nodes towards that hunter then you will do seven damage to it uh, with a ranged attack that's up there now this icon here means that we can spend uh, discard two cards from our hand and put them onto our stamina boards in order to dodge the attack and avoid all damage or we're going to risk taking seven damage and remember we only have Eight, eight health in total. So yeah, that's gonna hurt quite a lot, but let's get this shuffled and let's get bashing this beastie in. 
So the behavior deck is made, we are ready to start fighting. But before we do, I'm just gonna explain a few other things about the combat system of this game so it makes a little bit more sense for those at home. Now, on the back of all of these behavior cards that we'll draw to determine what the great Jagras does, you can see this icon here, or it'll be that little tongue icon, which means that it attacks uh, the hunter that's furthest away. This means that it's going to go for the hunter that has the that is the closest to it. So it means that what uh, the hunters are doing here is they're reading the attacks of the uh, or the actions of their prey before they make them. Now, they don't know exactly what they're going to do, but they're getting sort of hints about what they're going to do uh, whenever they do it. So it means that Beanie and I can start planning how to move away or get up close to make sure that we take the least amount of damage possible. Now, when we get into combat with this great beastie over here, depending on what arc we're standing in, be it the front arc, the side arc, or at a diagonal, which means you get to choose either one of them, you can start attacking weak points of the monster itself. And once you do enough of these break tokens, which is indicated by that number over there, you'll break that area of the monster and you'll, ref uh, you'll basically resolve the effects that it says over here. We want this one here because uh, suffering five damage when the monster has 50 health to start with, is probably gonna help us immeasurably yes. in the long run. But remember my friends, it's not just Beady and I that are here on the table today because we have some support from our furry friends, the Palicos. Yay. That's right, they make an appearance in this game. And what we do is, we, uh, because there's two of us playing, you draw two cards uh, from the Palico deck, you flip them both over, and you decide which one of the two you want to have added to your party. And Beanie gets the same over there as well. So I've got Coral Orchestra Defense Boost or the Meowlatov Cocktail, which is just the best name. Yeah, right? yeah, and if you don't pick the, the Meowlatov <laughs> Cocktail, you're a fool. <laughs> it says here, if the monster is within one node of your hunter, place break tokens on one part of that monster up to its part break value. So basically, you get a free break thing on it. So that's, that is definitely something Thing I'm going to go for over here, so I'll put I that down over here. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to take the Vigor Wasp spray because it allows us to give a heal. Oh, that's amazing. Select a hunter within two nodes of your hunter, recover all health that hunter has lost by setting their health dial to full. Yes, that is insanely good. So what we do is we put this down here onto our inventory tracker, and it means that uh, we use this token to activate it once per battle or once per hunt, and then it's gone for the rest of the hunt on that one okay. there. So we're gonna get set up, and then we'll be back to start the fight. So here we are, we are all set up for the hunt, and both of our hunters have deployed here and here from one of the four starting hexes or nodes that we could have chosen from. Now, the reason that we've done that is because we know that the first attack, no matter what it is, is gonna target the hunter that is closest to him or the one that has the biggest threat range. So because of the fact that we're both equidistant nodes apart from him, he's probably gonna be going for yours truly Yay. over here. So that means that we can probably try and get him into the corner and Beanie can start stabbing some back and start breaking that tail over there. But this is the thing, Bean. Every single time you play this uh, this game, the monsters dictate the pace of battle. They get the first turn. We don't get the jump on it. It unfortunately has got the jump on us. So let's start resolving the first action. So it's a head slam. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna move two towards the closest hunter over here. That's gonna be yours truly. And then it's gonna do seven damage to me unless I can get out of its way. Oh Lord. Yeah, it's not playing around in the slightest over here. But luckily there uh, has a dodge uh, cost of two, which means if I discard two cards from my hand of five, which I'll draw up in a second, then that means that I could potentially mitigate all damage and will be ready to go, albeit at the cost of my stamina over here. So let's draw up and see what we've got. So in my hand, I've got quite a lot uh, of attack cards, but I've also got this great sword block option which I can discard when attacked by the monster to gain plus three defense for the duration of the behavior which means that with my uh, minus one damage that comes in anyway from my chainmail trousers it means that I'd only be taking six damage to begin with and then minus three so three damage so I could just basically take it on the chin there or I could discard two cards immediately by putting them onto my stamina board and take no damage whatsoever. What do we think, Bean? Do we wanna? I'd take the damage myself so you cool. can see it more open to do some stabbing back. I like it. So I'm gonna basically discard this one over here. This is gonna go into my discard pile and I will only be taking, uh, what is it gonna be? Minus three, gonna be down to six. So three damage for mm -hmm. the privilege of that. So not too bad uh, against that one there. But now we get to attack back or at least have an action. So one of us will get to activate next and we'll be allowed to play two cards for, for whatever we decide to do. So do you want to, uh, to move up 
to try and attack him over there in the back, or do you want me to start swing swinging away at him and see if I can crack open his skull with some of my attacks? Hmm, I, I want to hit him. Cool, right, okay, so what we're going to do then is uh, we're going to move this uh, behavior card over here, and then Beanie is going to activate. Uh, he's going to, he gets one free move node here because he can run, uh, so, or walk, sorry. So I'm gonna go to there, yep. then I'm gonna discard one to sprint. Yep, so you discard a card, put it face down onto your uh, stamina deck over here, and that means that you will end your turn, uh, sorry, end your movement next to him, and now you can put down one more card uh, to attack. Ooh, the sword and shield combo over here. Beautiful. Let's just double check what this does. Oh, that means that Beanie gets to uh, draw three cards from his damage deck over here, which will start piling on the hits against the Great Jagra. So three cards, let's resolve them one after another, my friend. And it also applies a break token as well, which helps uh, sort of bust up his spine over here. Time to kick so, some back. One, two, Ooh. three. Ooh, so he takes three damage and gains a break token. It may be a drop in the water when he's only got 50, he's got 50 health to start with, but it's still starting things as they mean to carry on. So after looking at its card over here, we've realized that it's got an armor value of one, meaning that that's only gonna be two damage against it, bringing it down to 48 health remaining. Uh, we're getting there, Bean, we're getting there. But because Bean played a card that's got this weird uh, ending logo on there, that ends his turn completely. So we are done for our turn. And now, unfortunately, it means that the Great Jagras is going to attack again. It's going to be targeting the person who is the furthest away from it. But again, because we are equidistant, that means it's coming for me again. Yay! All right. So this is going to be a forward swing. So it's going to move three towards me and then it's going to be attacking me for six whole damage. I am going to need to get out of dodge if I can. Um, just forgot as well, at the end of uh, Beanie's turn, we have to discard a time card and resolve its effect and we got raw. So he's flipped his hunter token face down, discard one uh, attack card from the rightmost of the stamina, stamina ball. So that combo thing has already gone. And now you can discard any number of attack cards from your hand and draw up again, but we decided not to do that. Uh, then you're gonna draw up to five attack cards anyway, and now we roll a die. Discard cards from the time deck equal to the amount rolled. So we could have lost a lot of time because it's roared and basically knocked us on our ass. Oh, oh no. Why do, why do I roll high here? <laughs> like, yeah. damn it. So six cards go from the time deck, which means that we're gonna need to get a move on, mate. So after consulting the rule book, what we do is we move the Great Jagras forward three and then it attacks. But here's the thing, I was in the corner, and so what it did was it moved onto the same node as me, pushing me out of the way, or dodging as I like to think, because I'm slightly more skilled than that. But then it continues to move forward three, uh, uh, two more uh, nodes, but that isn't possible because it would move off the edge of the board. So what it does is it just stays still, looking like an idiot before then attacking with its forward swing, but only in its front arc over here. So that means that it attacks, I'm not in range, so no one takes any damage. Screw you, you big idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and now that means that I get to, uh, one of us gets to activate next, so I'm gonna choose to activate, and I get to play two of uh, cards in the next turn. So I'm gonna consult my hand and see what I've got. Stab. Okay, so after a bit of discussion, I think that we have a cunning little scheme. Little, little, little scheme. Little scheme, baby. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna activate both my palico and my ability to stab it right in the side and hopefully double break this absolute bad boy, making him look like an even bigger idiot. So the plan is, is that Mialotov Cocktail, if I discard this right now, I can uh, place break tokens on one part of the monster up to its break part value. So I'm gonna do that on the head. So it's gonna have four, break tokens on there. One more will mean that it's completely destroyed. And if we do that, it means that any poison damage that it may have will then be treated as physical damage instead of elemental damage instead. And if you remember, through our exploration, we added a poison attack in there, so that's perfect for us. Yes. So my Mialatov cocktail is now out of commission. I'll put him to the side over there. Yeah. And now I'm gonna resolve two attacks because I can play two cards in this thing. And it's gonna be two rising slashes right into its side, which again, is gonna do two break tokens to this side arc over here. And I get to draw four cards from my attack deck. So, one, ooh, double damage. two, ooh, three, Four. So I will be doing six. six damage in total, minus one because I'm attacking it in its side, five damage to the beast, and it is ready to be broken to take another five damage as well. Take that, you massive chungus. 
So it turns out that we've actually broken both of these areas because it says equal to the break value breaks it. So that means no poison damage. Ha ha, idiot the first. And also the monster suffers five damage for breaking this area. Ha ha, idiot the second. So I'm gonna move his counter down by five, but first I'm gonna draw a time card because I have to do that at the end of my turn. And we draw threat shift. Flip my hunter token down, discard one attack card from my rightmost slot, done that. Draw attack cards up to five in my hand. I'll do that in a second. And now all players pass their hunter token to the player to their left. Oh no. So that means that you now have a threat range, threat value of nine, and I have a threat value of five. Thanks, and that means, that means that he's going to be coming for you next. Hooray. Oh no. <laughs> so we're going to uh, resolve this attack action now. And that is going to be that he turns towards the now Threatening beanie over here. <laughs> I'm sorry, mate. And he's going to move two towards you. So he's going to go uh, one, two, one, two, like that. Uh, I might, you might be able to dodge out of his way that way, to, uh, thinking about it. Um, and then he's going to do a spit action. But remember, because of the fact he's got no poison uh, damage, this is only going to do uh, seven physical damage to you. Only. I know only, only, right? But let's just double check the movement options to make sure that you can actually move out of the way of this. So he will push a beanie forwards like that, but beanie is saying that he is going to... Discard two of my attack cards. So pop him down onto here, um, face down, just to show that they've been used up. And that means that beanie is going to dodge out of the way of the spit attack, taking no damage whatsoever. No better, no better, no better. But now one of us will get to activate and draw and uh, play two cards. So Bean, we have to decide between us, do you want to get out of dodge here? Or do you want me to come and time and kick some back? What kick some back, man. Let's do it, mate. Let's do it. Okay, cool. So I will activate and see what I've got in my hand. So in my turn, I am going to use my one free movement to get behind it here. And then I'm going to play two cards, one of which is going to be charge up, which adds a plus one break token to the next attack that I play, and then jumping slash afterwards. So this is going to be doing two break for uh, going into this part of his body over here. Now, it doesn't add anything to us in terms of the bonuses of attacking it. Um, it doesn't lose any extra health or anything like that, but breaking all three things of this makes me feel good. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So we'll automatically, oh, we've got to draw two uh, cards from my attack deck. We get one and we also get, so two damage to its back, which is good. One. Uh, no mitigation on oh, this it's only one. On his spine. Yeah, only on his spine that he's got some armor here, and that will be two break tokens that go in there because it's plus one for the next attack card you play, which inflicts damage. So that means it's two break tokens onto its tail over there, and we remove two from its health. Now let's see what happens with the time card when I discard this. Ooh, Vespoid attack. Flip your hunter token face down. Discard one attack from the right hand side of your stamina board. I am doing that right now. Drop to five, and then your hunter suffers. Shock damage? No! 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 That's shocking. <laughs> no! That means that I've got paralysis, which means I have to discard down to two cards from my five that I've just drawn up to. I've decided to keep the greatsword block because defensive stuff is always the best. And I'm keeping overhead slam because it has this lovely ability here. For each other overhead slam that you play this turn, you get to add plus one to your, uh, draw one from your damage deck, which is very good indeed. But I've drawn the time card. It now goes back over to the great Yagras, who's gonna attack the closest person uh, which we are both in contention for, but it's going to turn to you because of the Yay. fact that it is there. But what it's going to do now is it's going to move one to its right over here, and then it's going to attack. Uh, how would that actually work? It would go like that, would it? Yeah. And then it would attack in its front three arcs over here because it's belly rolling to the right. And it's going to do so for seven damage. Ooh, that's no bueno, my friend. Okay, so do you have anything you can do to mitigate this? It's a three to dodge, three uh, cards to discard. You're shaking your head like you can't do anything here. Well, I have three cards in my hand. Yes. And that would then put me into the point where I can't play another two. No, and that's the thing. So you cannot actually get rid of this. So unfortunately, you're going to have to take the full seven down to six because of your leather mail in the chops. Oh, lovely. Two oh. health, all I need. <laughs> Two health, oh dear. And unfortunately, it also applies some status elements here. That means that Beanie has to put one of his cards face down on his stamina board because he is stunned. So there we go. Ooh, Delali, that's not good at all. I am tired. But it is, uh, we both get to activate this time now because there's two hunter activations and we both get to play two cards. <gasps> Let's do some damage or recover. 
either or is good. I feel I might need to recover. <laughs> Let's have a think about this. <laughs> So Beanie chose to have the first turn over here and he fell back into the bush, which means that he's going to have a minus four to his threat, which means it takes it from a nine down to a five, which means that we are equals, equals on that. He's taking a breather. And in his second action, because you can make unlimited, uh, you can do every action on the defensive scale once, um, and it can be like a walk, it can be a sprint, it can be sharpening your weapons, which is what Beanie is going to do now by shuffling all of the used um, damage cards into his deck once more, because he's mm -hmm. sharpening his weapons within the bush, trying not to start a bush fire. Did you mention that I've healed myself oh, yes. before because I've mangled my pet through the grinder? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he basically <laughs> forced it through, uh, into made a nice sort of like cat style meaty toothpaste. You brushed your teeth and that means that you are back to full health. The Palico has gone. He's not gone really, he's just, uh, just hiding with him in the bush. Right, so that's your turn. And in my turn, I'm gonna get a little bit more physical, mate, because I feel like I've got to give this guy some damage. I can discard one of them and we've got oh, to yes. the thing. Oh yes, you've got to do this. So one goes away. Rampage, flip your hunter token face down, discard one attack card, which you've done, discard any number of attack cards from your hand and then draw back up to five. Okay, so minute. I'm going to get rid of one of the slinger shots. Oh, um, flipping hell, mate. Is he coming for me? During the next monster behavior turn, its behavior card has zero hunter turns, so we do not, it gets to attack twice. Oh, hot. Oh, this is going to well, suck. I'm glad I healed. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, um, oh, screw it, I'm going in. Right, okay, so in my turn here, I'm going forward. Uh, I'm going to do, did you draw anything good, by the way? Oh, oh, ooh, ooh, I'm guarded. That's very good, that's very good indeed. Uh, I've only got these two cards in my hand here, so I'm just gonna do, Ah, maybe I should move into the bush as well, and we would just hide out. Sit in bushes, thinking and Yeah, and, and just doing stuff. Okay, yeah, I think that I'm going to... Nah, hit him! Ah, yeah, we've got you to do coward. as... We've got to do as much. <laughs> oh, no, no, I, I only get to draw one card, and if I draw one, it's got one armour. So I might not do any damage to it. Oh, dear me. But you might draw a two. Yeah, I might do. I, do you know what? I'm going to keep my cards, but I am going to go over here into the bush and I'm just going to sharpen to put all of my things back in, recover as best we can before the rampage inevitably hits. Draw a time card, threat shift. We switch tokens over again. So We're my still... threat is one. <laughs> That's fine. That's absolutely <laughs> fine. And my threat is now five, five, which means that it's going to be attacking me twice effectively. Oh dear. Oh dear L indeed. Lucky we kept you the potion. Oh dear me. So here we are. It's the rampage section <laughs> because uh, it's going to attack twice. Now, it is going to turn to face me. Hello. Oh dear. It's going to move one to its left over here, and then it's just going to attack me for seven damage, doing a tasty, oh, this is a three to dodge as well, and it's inflicting stun onto me. You piece of trash. Is it time to discard all those cards, buddy, and yeah. not get mauled? I think that, damn it, I'm gonna have to, aren't I? Because, <laughs> yeah, oh, you did. <laughs> oh, and it's gonna attack me again, isn't it? So oh, uh, yeah. what I'm gonna do this time, though, is I'm gonna do the, Ooh. Actually, what if he, what if we end up drawing one where he's got to go against the uh, furthest away? Guy? I mean, it, it could, it's not unfortunately because the next one is the closest oh, again. Oh, yep, sorry, so my mistake. That's gonna suck. Um, I'm going to just do this first because it's gonna give me four defense against his seven, so I'll take three damage. I'm down to two, and then basically what I'll do is I will evaluate what his next attack is gonna do against me. <laughs> so I'm um, discarding this card here. Plus one uh, defense because of my chainmail trousers. It means I'm gonna take two damage and a stun token. So I believe I put one of these face down onto my stamina board. You do. I'm going to put down Rising Slash onto that one there. I wanna hold on to True Charge Slash because if I put this in the fifth uh, slot of my stamina board, I draw four attack cards. Lovely. Which could be very nice indeed, but because of the fact that we drew the, uh, the raw, that means that it's going to go straight away for another attack. And it is going to turn to face me. It's going to push me forward two times. One, two, one, two. And then it is going to attack me for six damage. Oh, hot. Oh, thank you. That's real nice of you, dude. Please, sir, may I have another? Uh, I can you... get rid of, I can avoid all of the damage if I discard two cards. I think I have to, unfortunately. At this point, you do. Yep. You've mitigated okay. a lot, but yep. it is time. So here we go. The two overhead slams are going into the stamina board over here. I'm going to dodge out of the way. Woo! Look at that little flip. Yeah! I did that. I was amazing. That was so good. I've got one card left in my hand, which is the true slash, which is going to be the most useful to me. And that is the end of his turn. Ooh. One of us now 
gets to activate and draw, th and they can play three cards. It has to be you. It has to be you, mate, because I think that uh, I went last time, didn't I? Mm -hmm. So I can't um, activate again until you've had a go. Okay. So, um, yeah, Beanie's going to have a look at his cards. He's going to figure out what we're going to do and pray for Mojo. Screamy Beanie, you tell us what plan you got, mate. Right, so I am going to do a little jog to there. I am Fair then move. going to discard one of my cards, which I'm going to get rid of Rising Slash, or maybe my most aggressive card, mm -hmm. but it's not as beneficial as some of my others right now. Yep, fair enough. So it allows me to move one more time. Yep. And now I can play one more attack, and I am going to do the round slash. Ooh, three drawn from the damage deck, and then you get to move a bonus action of one in any direction. Into the bush. Okay, I like it, so, I like it. So that hits there, I am now completely knackered. Yep, so you're gonna go uh, chill out in the bush for a little bit, but you do get to draw three from the damage deck. So, Ian, Ian. Die. Die! So four damage in total to his uh, to his back uh, or his tail over here. No break tokens. Um, yep. So that means we're going to be taking it down by four to bring him to 32 health. We are whittling away very slowly, but we are whittling away indeed. And you're going to finish your movement into, into the, the bush. bush over there. And please draw a time card and tell us what happens oh, next. Around. Okay. So we are doing the brief respite. Oh, that's, that's good news. Flip your hunter token face down, discard one attack card from your rightmost slot on the stamina board. Lovely and stuff. And you may discard one additional attack card from any slot of your stamina board. So you can just get rid of another one. So you basically get two uh, for the price of one. Yep, makes the most sense to get rid of that one. Well, that's not too bad then, B. Yeah, and uh, I can draw back up. And then draw back up. But now, the Jagras attacks. And it's going to be against me because I'm the closest one and I'm there. But luckily for me, because it's a big idiot, it's going to move three towards me. And remember, I can dive out of the way and it keeps going this way. <laughs> you stupid idiot, you stupid idiot. So it's going to attack in the front arc. No one's in there. No damage done. Eat some of that, mate. Eat some of that. Yeah. Give it that. Give it. Go on, Bean. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. that, mate. <laughs> uh, one of us gets to activate and get <coughs> two cards. Um, well, I've only got one card in my hand, but it is the big hit. So if I put it down, I will draw four from my attack deck and I can just smash him straight away because I could use my free movement to get to there, attack him in the back, that is four cards. That Shall we do it? four cards. Yeah, I, I, I love it. Let's do it, mate. So I'm going to activate. I'm putting my true charge slash over here. I too am very bollocksed, but I will be doing four. So let's see. Ian. Ian. In die. die. So five damage to this idiot over here. <laughs> We're doing <laughs> it. Now it is time to draw a time card and resolve the actions. Da, 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 da. Ooh, wiggly litchy. What is this? Flip your hunter token face down. Yep. Discard one from your right party stamina board. Yep. Get all of your attack cards back, and you may discard all attack cards from your stamina board! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. I've cleared all of my stamina board, and that could not have come at a better time. So I'm completely clear and breezy, and I'll have five new cards to deal with whatever comes next. We go to the Great Jagras's attack. It's going to be targeting the closest one, which is me, again. So we flip it over. It's a belly slam. Okay, so interestingly enough, it's going to do... The damage, it turns to, to face me. It's then going to do the damage before it then does its movement, rather no. than the other way around. Oh yeah, because it's rolling on its belly at you. Yeah, that's quite cool. So it just basically has gone like slam, and then it jumps back. So it's going to turn towards me. It's going to do range one. It's three cards to get rid of. It's seven damage, and it's going to attack in the front arc and two side arcs as well. So it's only going to hit me and then it's gonna jump back for two, and then one of us can activate after that. This is gonna be a pre-diddly ickment because I don't wanna take seven damage. Definitely not. So I, I, I literally can't, so I'm going to have to try and, I'm gonna to have to discard three cards, unfortunately. You that are, is a shame. fill up that stamina board, Yeah, baby. Right, right back up, mate, right back up. So I'm gonna discard three to mitigate all the damage, and then it's gonna jump back two. It cannot go any further than the corner of the board, so it's gonna stay there, menacingly glaring at us, and we know that it's a next attack is gonna target the person furthest away from us. So I'm gonna run away then, so I can yes, get yes, to uh, chase me. That would be very useful, because again, I'm on two health. Well, I, I luckily, drew a back step to give me an additional move. Ooh, I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, so uh, Beanie's going to activate next, um, and I'm going to discard my cards. So in Beanie's turn, he has chosen to discard Chop 
over here, which means that he can move uh, two away uh, uh, with the additional one from his free move anyway. And he's ended his turn all the way over at the back edge of the battlefield over there. So uh, there's no other things to play. So we will do a time card. Do the time card. So what we have got? tactical shift. Flip your hunter token face down, scarf on the right. It's going to uh, stand stuff. Up to two hunters may move uh, up to one node each. Oh, that's really good. OK, so I'm going to just move a little bit away from him over there. And just you, or maybe I should. Uh, he, if we think that he's going to be moving towards you no matter what because of the... Um, Why don't you move closer? I might move, predict where he's going to go and end here because he's going to be charging towards you and if I'm closer to him in his yep. end, well, it's going to be attacking him. So it's going to be easier in the next one. That. So discard that uh, chop that you just played over and there. back up to five. Indeed he do. And now we get to resolve the great Jagras' oh, wow. attack. That's Anyth good. Anything good? Yeah, advancing slash. So I can move to... Uh, hit him and draw one if you've played a back step this turn, which I kept in my hand. So ah, I'm going to be able to do jump some back, damage, yeah. come forward, a bit more stabbing. Oh, I like that a lot. Uh, but we have got to watch out for his front claw smash. So he is going to be targeting the person who's the furthest away. So he's going to turn to face Beanie on that one there. And then he's going to move three. three. One, two, three, because he can't move. I don't know how you'd have to turn to face him and then he just moves forward towards the hunter in that sense. It's still closer than he was before. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to attack in his side and front nodes for seven damage, but no one is in the way. So oh, yes. he is looking like a right fool over here. And the best part is both of us get to activate and we both get to play two cards. Uh, just realized that he should have moved here because it has to move towards the closest possible thing. And that is definitely closer than the node over there. But we both get to activate now. So we just need to figure out how we're gonna do the attacks. I've only got two spaces on my card, but the two attack options that I have in my hand are both tackle, which means that I get to move closer to him do one from the damage uh, deck and also apply one stun token a piece. And he has a resistance of two stuns, meaning that we've equaled it, means that he is affected by stun and that reduces his dodge requirements for his next attack down to one. Easy. It is definitely the way forward there. So I'm gonna activate, use my free movement. I can decide to go into either the side arc. It is bum. It's going right into the bum bum. I get to move, actually I get to move again twice because of my tackle, so I'm gonna get right behind him into the bush as well, and I get to draw two from my attack deck. So the first one is, bam, 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 bam. ooh, die. Ooh, good start. And the second one is, ooh, ooh. also die. So four ooh. damage into his little body over there, and two stun tokens, meaning that he is dazed and very confused. So I've drawn up, and in the time card, we got to move another free node. So Bean has used his to move towards uh, the Great, great Jagras, and I am staying put right there because I feel like the behind him is the best place to be in the grand scheme of things. Um, I've also put two stun tokens on him, which means that the next attack, no matter who it goes up against, is only going to take one card in order to dodge completely. So into Beanie's turn now, because we've got two activations, and what are you doing, brother? So um, I kind of want to save these to do a combo in a bit. Okay. So I'm thinking I'm just going to add to his stunned woes and give him another stun. I like it, man. Just I, don't know, I don't know if they accumulate. I think what it does is it um, stacks up and then breaks, and then you would be applying another one onto him. So that means that um, when he uh, gets another stun token, the next attack from that point will um, get well, down that, to one well, again. I was thinking that because this also, you can immediately uh, discard this attack from the stamina board. Oh, perfect. So you're placing it down and just taking it straight off. Fantastic. Yeah, because I, I need to get my stamina board down. So I'm going to get to do that. I get cool. to draw one, one card. And I'm assuming you're attacking him in the head because it's got zero uh, yep. defensive properties. So it's just the one damage. Eating damage. So he's down to 22. We're getting there. We're getting so I'm going to take that away. Yep. Uh, which means now we get to do this part. Indeed we do. Which is... Monster sleeps. What? Okay. Remove <gasps> one break part from each monster body part that isn't broken and the monster recovers five health. Oh no. Okay. That means that uh, the tail is back to being not broken again, which is a pain in the backside, quite literally in fact. And now he recovers five health. So he's up to 27. Dang it. Wasn't Dang the it. best, but I am feeling a little bit more stamina yes. filled. It is good, and now we get to resolve his attack, which is going to go 
spit up bleh, like that. And uh, because of the fact that we removed his poison gland, uh, that means that it's going to be physical damage. But remember, it's only going to take one to dodge. It would have taken four to dodge it normally. So wow. that could not have come at a better time. And the best part is, is that after he's done this attack action, both of us can activate again and play three cards each. And I got three slots, baby. I think it's time to do some big damage to him. So he's going to do no movement. He's going to turn to face the person who was the furthest away which is neither of us, but it's going to turn to face me because I am the highest threat. No, I'm not, because I'm you're in a bush. bush. It's you. Mm -hmm. He's going to spit. It's going to do nothing, because I assume you're going to discard one card for free. I certainly am. So we've dodged the attack there with a chop. Uh, and then he's going to jump backwards to... He can't move anywhere further from that point, so he's going to stay there. Not and bad. please don't be monster sleeps. Oh no, we don't draw on this on his one, it's only on oh, the Hunter only activation. On oh, brilliant. So now we both get to activate and play three cards each. Let's do the damage, mate. Let us kill this sucker if we can. Yeah. Right, so I'm choosing to activate first over here and I'm going to play the True Charge Slash in the fifth slot, so I'm drawing four from my damage deck. So it is... Two. Ooh, die. Ian. Ian, and one more. Ian. And what number is that? That is Pimp yeah. in total Best in Welsh. There ever. we go. So Pimp damage to him, bringing him <laughs> back down to 22. How'd you like that, mate? You can sleep that off. Try and sleep that headache off, you big tit. Right, okay, so that's the end of my activation. And the time card says... Nitro Toad. -toad. What? All roll hail the Nitro Toad. Ooh, roll a dice and on one to three, place a broke to break token onto one part of the monsters. Or a four to a six, I suffer explosive damage. Oh, great. Cool. Don't roll a six. Oh, come on, man. Please. A four? Is that good or bad? That's bad for you. Dang it. Okay, so I take explosive damage or whatever that means. Fantastic. Lovely. Oh, Delali. What that's done is it's blown my pants off quite literally because I now have a minus two armor until the end of the next turn. Oh. But luckily, Beanie now gets to activate and hopefully he can save me from this predicament because remember, he's going to attack the furthest person so away. Something I want to understand about the armor. How come my my leather trousers give me zero armor, yet your trousers give you one, but your leather vest my gives chain you zero? Gives zero and and mine, I, I'm really confused as to the. I've no I idea. Love it, but... No idea, but that's <laughs> but that's just how it be in the world of Monster Hunter. So um, you need to figure out what you're going to do, because if possible, could you attack and then move back from it to become the furthest person away? That would be really helpful. Yeah, I can actually. Oh, can you? Oh, yes. And remember, you get to play, I think it's three cards in this turn. I only got two slots. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. So I'm going to use my one. Free move. Come to see you. Come then I one. am. Oh, no. No, that. Oh, yes. Actually, yes, I can. Is it good? Is it good? Is it good? Uh, move two and then do one damage. And then if you play a back step, do you have a back step card? Things though, I want to be paying the back step afterwards so I can move further away so he comes charging after me. Yeah, that's true. That is true. So what are you going to do in this situation? Oh. You could do your two movements and then you get to attack with one range. And it's only just one attack. And then run away one, which means that he would come after me instead. Might, we might have to do yeah, that. Much yeah, I think I, I think I do. So I'm going to do the advancing slash, so I'm going to go. Eh, eh. Yeah, I like it. I love it. Brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. Just to dance around him. Draw Hitch. one. Ooh, for Ian damage right into the top of his bond. So he's down to 21 health. And, and then, then your second action, he's going to backstep one away from the big monster over here, becoming the furthest one away. So that's the end. Time card, me baby. What do we got here? Oh, God. The oh. Nitro Toad again. Oh, no. Really? It's okay. my turn with the Nitro Toad. Roll a dice. Yeah! Okay, you're fine, no Nitro Toad so, for you. So I'm going to add a break point onto his tail. Oh, amazing. That's cool. So I uh, just need one of those break tokens that are put over there. Thank you. So that gets to go into any part of the monster's body. It's nearly broken, just for the sake of saying that it is broken. And now the monster will attack. His final card in his behavior deck is going to be the Billy Charge. So he's going to advance towards you for three. One, two, three. But because he's I'm done gonna that, go to the side. you're going to go to the side, and he's going to be facing that way. He will still catch you. No, he won't, because it's only in the... No, you are still in this front arc, unfortunately. So that's going to be seven damage and three to dodge. So uh, Beanie has got to figure out a way of mitigating this damage. So what he's going to do is play. Guard up. So plus three to my, my armor, 
Yep, that's cool. So four and damage. And it halves the damage of all elemental stuff coming in. That's so, fantastic. Uh, yeah, and then take another one away for the fact that my uh, shirt is pretty resilient. So, so seven goes down to... Three. three health. So we've got two health. You've got three health. We've got one potion remaining. Oh, no, no, no. So I'm going from eight, if you remember. Oh, yes, yeah, so you're on full, weren't you? One, two, okay, three. So okay. I'm on five. Okay, that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. And we survived another round. So what we're going to do now is shuffle up his behavior deck once more and figure out what's going to happen next. So at the beginning of our turn, we get two activations each with two card drops apiece. So what I've decided to do is uh, play my tackle card that I drew last turn. I get a free move to go up to here. Then I get to move one for free and then smash him right in the back, inflicting the second stun token we need. So he's now stunned again, like an idiot. And we get a bonus free draw on the damage deck as well for three. Hey! Hey! Okay, so that is another three damage to him, so that he's going to be on 18. Come on, Beanie. Halfway, mate. We can do this, mate. We can do this. Um, that was a nice actual little bit of bonus, but I am going to need to sharpen next round because I've only got one yeah. card in my thing. But he is stunned, and that means the next attack he does is only going to cost one to dodge. And Beanie now gets to activate. Okay. So first thing that I get to do is that at the start of my next turn, I get to discard this off my stamina immediately. Oh, which... sorry, I forgot to draw my time card. Apologies, mate. I'm sorry. I will go back to that in a sec. So my time card is Poison Cup. Oh, God damn it. Roll a dice. Uh, I can poison him or I poison myself. Now, I have been doing so well in terms of the Nitro Toes. I'm sure that it will go... It did go swimmingly because we had to place one poison token on the monster's physiology card. And what is this poison... He's only got one poison defense, so he's poisoned now. Idiot! <laughs> Idiot! <laughs> so that means that the great jag ass over here is completely poisoned, meaning that at the uh, start of its next turn, it's going to take an extra two damage just because it's a big idiot. So not too bad. Um, it now goes over to Beanie, who did aforementionedly say that he's Get rid of take... my Garda. That's gone. And then I'm just going to lateral slash him because I haven't got many other options because I can only do one more attack. Very nice. Okay, so you're going to do two draws from the damage deck, Ooh. two, die, and Eden. Eden. So three more damage, bringing him down to a mighty 15 wounds. <sighs> Not bad, man, because at the beginning of his turn, which is going to be the next one, I'm just going to automatically move it down another two because of the poison that he's inflicted but with. But don't forget this. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. This might change things. Oh, no. Oh, is it a bad one? Well, it's called Rampage, so oh, no. that doesn't brim me with hope. Okay, what does it do? During the monster's next turn, his behavior oh. card has zero. Oh, so it gets to attack twice. <laughs> okay, this could be a problem, but that's fine. We'll deal with it as and when it occurs, which is right now. So at the beginning of its turn, it's lost its two health. I'm then going to deal with the spit up attack because I'm the closest and the most aggroed to it. Turns to face me. It will do five damage to me unless I can block it for one card, which I'm going to do. Definitely. So one card face down over there. So I take no damage from that attack. Then it's going to jump back two away from me, which it cannot do. So it's going to stay put just roaring loudly. Now, normally we'd get two activations with three card drops apiece, but unfortunately because of the rampage, it's now going to go straight away into the closest person that's next to him, which is again, me and it's going to do a belly welly slam. Okay, this belly welly slam over here, unfortunately, is going to kill me. There is no way that I can do uh, avoid the three damage. I don't have any defensive cards in my hand. So unfortunately, it is going to crush, kill, and destroy your dear old hunter here. Oh dear. Oh no, I have fainted, but fret not my friend because I am just carted back to camp. I get to come back into the fight at the beginning of the next round and I'm going to come back on full health with a full five cards in my hand ready to do so. But it does say here, if the hunters faint three or more times during this quest, then we fail overall. But we also have to discard two time cards from the deck as well. So Beanie may be on his own for one turn, but I will be back soon, I promise. So Beanie is completely unperturbed by my absence on the battlefield because he has put down the sword and shield combo at the end here. He's got two uh, attack actions already in play, so we can play this. It will end his turn immediately afterwards, but he gets to draw three from his attack deck, which looks a little bit like... Ooh, a nice bit of four damage. Nice, right into his back. So he is down to nine wounds, my friend. We are doing this. We are actually going to do this he said, lyingly, because he could still absolutely drum us in right now, and likely he will, because the time card says... 
the Paratoad. Oh no. Roll a dice. On a one to a three, place a paralyzed token on the monster. Okay. And a four to six, it'll happen to oh, me. Oh, please roll low. Please roll low because this this could be the game breaker right here. Oh no. So you've got the paralysis, uh, paralysis token on your card. I'll check to see what that means right now. So Beanie's had to discard down to two cards in his hand. And Leaving he's kept, these. Which is guard up, which is great, and lateral slash. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So let's see what the great Jagass is going to do to you now because he's going to flip over his behavior card and he's going to do a front claw smash. He will turn to face you. He will then move three. three. So he'll push you out of the way. One, two, <laughs> like an idiot over here, which means that you are not in its front arc, but you still will get hit by its side attack there. So unfortunately, you're still going to take damage. It's going to be seven damage and it costs three to avoid, which you don't have. So I'm going to play guard up. So that means that you get plus three to your defense. And plus one there, so I'm going to take three damage from this attack, so I'm now down to two. Yep. I am alive. Yes, that works perfectly because I am now back in the battle, and we both get to activate, and we both get to play two cards. This could be it. I'm too tired to play anything. Uh, you... Oh, oh yes. I get to oh, no, I get to discard that at the start of I my fight. I start your turn, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is the thing. You go first, and then we'll figure out what I can even do, because I don't think I can even get to you in order to do damage, even okay. though I am oh, fresh. Oh, yeah, I don't get to draw any cards, because I've only got the one in my hand anyway. So. Yeah, so that, so that one goes. goes there. I'm going to lateral slash him. You're just going to go for it. You're not going to run away, because maybe it's worth coming back here with me, and we'll then do a tandem attack together. Ah! You've got two health. If he does any damage to you... It, oh, it is going to attack the furthest away, so it will do against me. Oh, that's, that's fine. That's fine then. Do some damage, mate. Do some damage. Okay, so two. Oh, more... do you want to use your free move though to get here so that you can attack his back again? Yeah, why not? And yep. now I'm onto my two last two attack cards, so it's for Ooh, three more damage. Three more damage. So he is down. One, two, three. He's down to six wounds remaining. Can we do it, guys? Can we do it? I really hope so because I'm oh. now going to get to activate, and I'm just going to basically stand here and taunt him. I'm going to flip in the V's. Let's go. N. Just realised that Beanie drew the sleep toad at the end of his time section, so he's got to roll a dice. Come on, lucky dice. Don't get poison, Bean. He did yeah! get poison! And that means that you put a poison on him, so he's going to take it. Sleep token. Oh, is it sleep token? Oh, so, that's even better. Does, does he have a nap? I will find out. So it turns out that the big beast is asleep thanks to the sleep toad, which means that when we draw the next uh, monster activation, it only does, you, you don't do anything. It just ignores all of his stuff, and we just get to do whatever the hunter actions say. So, with my movement, uh, I need to close the gap in order to do the damage. So I'm going to do my one for free, and then I'm going to see here if I've got any cards here that will allow me to sprint. Oh, I'm not... Dude, I'm, what? just let me go next. Look what card I drew. Oh, he's got the sword and shield combo. And oh. I'm right at the end. Oh, that's good. So unfortunately, I, I can't even get close to you at this point because I can only uh, move an extra one because I'm like pretty yeah. slow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stay put over here. That's the end of my turn. I get to draw a time card, see what happens to it. The Paratoad is back again. We love this guy because of the fact that it doesn't, it won't actually matter to me, but no. it would be great if it also went to him. So the Paratoad. Well, one to three then. One to three. It's a one to yeah, three. Yeah, so yeah. he's also got paralysis as well, which means. Right, so we had a little bit of a chat off camera because the beanie had zero cards left in his uh, attack thing. So he needed to sharpen his weapon in order to do the final six bits of damage. This monster is asleep. It is paralyzed. It is unable to defend itself, but we can't do the damage, unfortunately. So beanie activated. He moved one away for free. He discarded chop, which means that he can uh, dash two because it's uh, got the oh, sprint. Oh, sorry. Yes, but don't worry. So there's another one over here. So it's a sprint one of two. And now he's going to sharpen his weapon, giving him a full attack deck once more. Now, the great Jagass will activate, but unfortunately it's asleep, so it will do nothing, and we both get to do two cards, yes. and we both get to activate. So let's see if we can get in and do this damage now. Oh, and I should also say that Beanie Drew keep hunting, which means that there are no things to resolve over here. Fantastic. Lovely. Awesome stuff. Cool. Into our turn. So what I've done... So what we're doing is we are finishing this fight, much like Halo 2 and 3 when it used the same thing. Okay, right, yeah. so what we're gonna do is I've used my free move to get up one, I've discarded two face down cards to move two, and I still get to play two attack cards face up in my turn. And I'm gonna do as much damage as possible, boom. Two rising slashes right into its tail. It is four cards and two break tokens, meaning that we break every single thing on this yeah! monster. Will we be able to break its spirit as much as we break in its bones? Brilliant start! Oh, that's so the good! The best start! Okay, so it's three... It can't, you can't lose! It's three damage. It's two Five. damage! 
We did Six. it. Six. He's dead. He's dead. With eat, gusto. Eat that. So we have slain the mighty great Jagras right here with a huge rising slash. The great sword hunter cleaves its tail off and then just nubs it right in the face until it yeah. goes, stop, stop. Yeah, I'm dead. And we did it just in the nick of time. We only had four turns left in wow. order to resolve that. So that was getting pretty hairy and scary indeed. But fret not, even if I didn't draw well on this, Beanie was ready to push forward with his round slash and finish the job. But there we have it. We have slain our first beast. We have completed our first hunt in Monster Hunter World. What did you think of it, Bean? That was such a good laugh. <laughs> it really was. Really tense, like, because yeah. I, I, at points, especially like the stamina meter that makes you feel like a bit, um, snubbed, yeah. you, can't, you can't get the damage in. I was proper fretting that we wouldn't kill the man. It was great. I love the time mechanic as well, because yeah. just when we thought that we had the edge, it would then say, nope, you don't. But then it completely swung in our favor with a few choice dice yes. rolls to stun and sleep this great beast. I love the fact that this box as well comes with quite a few different options, including the mighty Rathalos over there, which we'll definitely have to take on in a future endeavor. We can also level up our characters. And because we actually defeated the, uh, the great Jagras, we flip it over and you get to see what rewards you get from it. <gasps> More crafting materials, depending on what you broke and what you, uh, you roll on a dice roll, depending on how many things you found. And it means that we can upgrade our hunters going forward to get better and stronger armor and weapons. It is a fantastic game that is built with a huge campaign in mind. And I love the adventure book that you have as well. The quest yes, book. that's the, such a laugh. The little like choose your own adventure elements are just brilliant fun because they can screw you over as much as they will help you. But the best part of all of this is that this isn't the only Monster Hunter news that has come out because today, I believe that when this video has gone up, that Steamforged has just announced that Iceborne will be the next expansion for Monster Hunter, the board game. Ooh. It is going to be huge, huge, colossus, some would say even monstrous. That's been our sort of lovely monster hunt today. Hope that you enjoyed that. Let us know what you thought about it down in the comment section below, whether or not you picked up this game, have played for yourself, or are thinking of getting it based on this video. As always, if you want to follow us on the social medias, you can follow Beanie over on Instagram at... Beanie40k. And you can follow me over on Instagram at RetroJ, but the O is a zero. Hope to see you over there, my friends, and we'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bye.